is detainment or capture. All right, hopefully we're up and running on YouTube. I don't know. All right, hopefully we're up and running on YouTube. I don't know. All right, hopefully we're up and running on YouTube. I don't know. Okay, good evening, my friends and followers. I'm your lawyer, Patrick McGinn, and I am your best friend at your worst time. Welcome to Law and Life Live. Tonight, we're talking about how social media can impact your case, whether it's a family law case or a criminal case. Um, a few matters of housekeeping. If you don't follow me on other social media platforms, I'm on TikTok and YouTube right now. If you want to follow me on other social media platforms, I'm very active on Instagram as the Magic City Lawyer, on Twitter at uh, PJ McGeehan Law, on LinkedIn as Patrick McGeehan, and on Facebook, I have a Facebook group, Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer, and a Facebook page, the Law Offices of Patrick McGeehan, and you can find me there, as well as um, you can email me, Patrick, at pjmlawyer.com. And you certainly can call the office 305-577-4933. So how's everybody doing on lockdown, quarantine, coronavirus, or whatever it is that we're experiencing? I hope you're doing well. We're doing well here. Surprisingly, it's been very busy. I picked up a DUI manslaughter case yesterday and a couple cases today and just got off a phone conference in a case. As far as I know, none of the court orders have changed for our jurisdiction down here. Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County courts are still suspended, only doing essential operations at the moment. And we don't know when that's going to end. Uh, the present order that's in place now for Miami-Dade County ends on Friday and we are expecting uh, that order to be extended. Um, Broward County, I think, is suspended until April 17th, Palm Beach County until May 1st, or at least that's what it was the last time that I looked in upon them, which was not today because it's been quite busy today, actually, surprisingly. Uh, looks like we're up on YouTube, and hopefully we're getting some sound going on there. I don't see anything going on there. TikTok looks good. Yeah, it's been insane. Um, I had to go downtown today to check the mail in the office, and it was like driving in on a Saturday. It usually takes me a good 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes to get into the office at the, at the time of day I did, about 2 o'clock. And today it was just a breeze, man. Breezed right in, breezed right out. No problem at all. Traffic is definitely less than it was. Uh, supposedly, Dade County is going under the stay-at-home order today. I heard that on the radio coming in. And if you're planning a vacation to the Florida Keys, the Florida Keys are now closed as of Sunday evening. I heard additionally that the sheriff's office in the Keys is going to be this a little bit. The sheriff's office in the Keys is going to be stopping people on Card Sound Road as well as US One, setting up roadblocks and not letting you in if you. Are not a resident so only residents can go to the keys um, they can do that because there's only two roads in the key in and out of key largo it's very easy for them to do whereas all of our other counties have multiple roads going in and out basically if you're not familiar with south florida it's just one urban area from the south part of miami all the way up to palm beach which covers what 40 miles or so it's just solid concrete through there and there's millions of roads leading in and out of the county, little side roads as well as interstates. That being said, tonight's topic is how social media can impact your case. It can impact your family law case as well as a criminal case. Um, I'm not sure what it is or the reason behind it, but people who are going through, a, and I'm sure you've seen it too, people who are going through a bad time, a lot of them tend to want to talk about it to anybody that will listen and everybody that will listen. 
And we see that a lot on social media. It's very common for people to air their dirty laundry on Facebook or Instagram or on other social media platforms. And that can affect your case if your case is ongoing. Um, the ways it can affect your case is, the ways I've seen it affect cases is like in a family law case where one party is claiming they don't have money, they can't afford to do this, they can't afford to pay that. And then you see them on social media, they're at clubs every weekend, they're at South Beach every weekend, they're going to the Bahamas, they're going to the Virgin Islands, they're drinking like crazy. Um, sometimes you even see them using uh, drugs on social media or whatever. That can impact your case. You need to keep in mind, anything that you post on social media can be discovered one way or the other, either through requests for productions or subpoenas to the, the social media platform, and it can have negative consequences on you. Also be aware that they track you. Google Location Services is very good at tracking you, as is Apple Location Services. And those that information is also discoverable by subpoena to the companies. Um, I regularly, whenever I get a case in and through the, throughout the case, I will check the social media profiles of the opposing party looking for information. That's pretty common. We request Facebook activity. If you didn't know it, there's a place you can go on Facebook in the, in the app and you can get all your activity for a period of time downloaded into one file. So be aware of that. Um, you know, like I said, location services are very good at tracking you through Google and Apple. We regularly request that information or subpoena that information. And it's in a lot of cases, it's proved to be very useful, especially in stalking cases where somebody is alleging that, you know, let's say Joe was going around, sneaking around Mary's house. Joe says, no, I wasn't there. We check into his Google location services, find out he was there on that date and time. So just be aware of all that. I tell my clients when it comes to the filing of a family law case on social media, don't post anything private. Don't post any pictures about what you're doing. Don't post any pictures about what you're up to. Don't make any statements that are derogatory. Number one, to the court. Number two, to the other party. Keep that stuff to yourself. If you feel you absolutely, they, they feel they absolutely have to get it off their chest. I'll tell them to call me or call one of my paralegals and, and tell it to us. We'll listen to it. And uh, they can get it off their chest that way. I also suggest that sometimes they, they seek out a therapist depending upon the severity of the situation. So just be aware that, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, the stuff you post there, even if it's you know, even if you have the privacy settings on it, Shield, it's discoverable and it can turn around and bite you in the butt really quickly. Um, that being said, in criminal cases, in criminal cases, Google location, Apple location services are very good for placing people at the scene of crimes. Just be aware if you're accused of a crime, one of the first things the police will do is they'll look into those services. And the cops now are really good at using um, using technology in their crime solving activities. Um, that's about it for the impact of, of social media in your case. Just keep that in mind. I have an earlier video on my YouTube channel that discusses briefly um, the social media impact. The, so the impact that social media can have on your particular case. And if you want to look for that, it's towards the uh, towards the beginning of my YouTube life when I put that out there. Um, as far as the law offices, we're up and running. Uh, we've been surprisingly more busy than I thought we would be this week. This is our, what, second week? Yeah, second week on quasi-lockdown. Um, We've been getting cases in. I got a DUI manslaughter case yesterday. I picked up two domestic violence cases today. Of course, they're not having hearings on anything until this is all over with. Basically, the Supreme Court and the local jurisdictions, the local circuits have suspended everything except essential operations. So what does that mean? We're sitting at home like you're sitting at home, and uh, we get to wear T-shirts and shorts and flip-flops every day. 
And to be honest with you, sometimes I wear shorts and shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops into the uh, into the office when we're not on lockdowns. Um, like I said, traffic's light. A lot of people are staying home. Not everybody. There was an incident last weekend of people out at the sandbar partying, and then the mayor decided to enter and i think it's being entered today our local stay-at-home order for miami-dade county so now we really have to stay at home and supposedly they're going to start sending code enforcement out and the police out to make sure that we are staying at home which will be interesting because they're trying to keep arrest down yet they're going to proactively enforce that so that's going to cause arrests to go up but to give you an idea of you know i looked into arrests on monday i think it was and we usually have a couple hundred arrests a day in miami-dade county 150 200 arrests a day there were 47 i think it was on monday so arrests are way down you know the cops don't want to be around anybody just like everybody else doesn't want to be around anybody else it's hard but we are all in this together you know we take it one day at a time and we'll, we'll end up all getting through it anyway our remote operations are set up we're fully re <coughs> excuse me we're fully running remote. We're running conferences on Zoom. We're doing consultations with clients on FaceTime and Skype and Zoom, uh, using email a lot, doing a lot of phone conferences. There are a couple of judges, one in Dade that we have a case with and one in Bro one or two in Broward that we have cases with that are actually getting work done on our cases. So we're appreciative to that. All the other cases were pretty much caught up on and they're just sitting waiting for the courts to reopen again whenever that happens to be of which i don't think it's going to be for another month i don't think you'll see courts open i may be wrong but i don't think you'll see courts open before may 1st and if not may 1st then it'll probably be june 1st before they open so it's a tough situation it's a tough situation all around we have now i think 900 and something cases of the virus in Dade County or something. Dade Broward and Palm Beach, South Florida leads the state with more than half the cases, which is expected because we have most of the people down here. Um, it's a good thing we're up and running. It, it, I've been helping other attorneys get their, get their remote set up, up and running, and it's working really well for us. It's worked well in the past, but now we're using it every day, whereas in the past we didn't use it every day. But now that we're using it every day, it's, it's quite impressive, the setup that we have. For example, I, I co-taught a family law class yesterday at the University of Miami while I was sitting here in front of the camera. And uh, I'll post that video on my YouTube channel once I, re once I receive the finished video from the professor. But it was me, the professor, and another family law attorney discussing preparations for hearings and depositions. So if you have a hearing or a deposition coming up in your family law case and you want to know how to prepare for it, there's some insight there, whether you're self-represented. Um, if you're self-represented, that can be very, very beneficial to you. It explains a little bit about what depositions are and how to get ready for them, as well as, as hearings, interviews with guardians at Lightham, we also covered briefly. It's about an hour-long video, a lot of information, and I'll post that up on YouTube as soon as I get it, as well as on the other platforms, or at least a portion thereof. Um, as far as other stuff, I mean, we're fully up and running, providing full legal services. A lot of attorneys are having problems. Um, I see them in the attorney groups. A lot of them are having problems getting their, their technology up and running. And I'm fortunate that we have ours up and running and are able to offer full legal services to our clients and uh, communicate with the courts and everything else. I just, I'm just thankful for that, that we can move cases along as much as we possibly can. So that's it. That's all I have. Let me go back and see if there are any questions that came along. TD Law 3, yeah, it's absolutely insane, man. It's, it's. I thought it would be slow. I mean, there was a market drop off on Monday morning, and then it's it's just picked up, and it's been constant since Monday. I don't know, I don't know how long it's going to last, but for this week at least, it's it's doing good. Most of the attorneys in my small business group have seen a 60% drop in incoming cases. And I've seen that. I've seen people posting on groups about, you know, a complete drop off in, in cases and not receiving any calls for the past week and a half or however long they've been under the quarantine or lockdown. 
But fortunately, I mean, our calls, our calls have been way up, both our Google, our calls that come through our Google pay-per-clicks and um, our calls in general are really up. Every day I get a summary of calls coming in from both of those and they, they've been surprisingly up there. All right, is the course house in Miami still closed? Yes, it is. Um, it's the standing, unless they entered an order today, I didn't check, but the last order that was entered on the 16th, I think it was, closes or suspends all operations of Miami-Dade courts until this Friday. And like I said, we're expecting another order to come out this Friday that extends that. All right, what is the status on evictions in Florida now? I know in in Dade County, for sure, evictions are all suspended, both by the courts and by the sheriff. I think the sheriff's office, the police department, Miami-Dade Police Department, issued a directive that they were going to suspend all put-out orders. So I think evictions are still suspended. The rest of Florida, I'm not sure. Um that looks like it's for questions. Let's see. We have a question coming in from Gwen on YouTube. What does compliance with court order mean? Compliance with a court order means you have to comply with the court order. Um, you have to do what the order says or what the order directs. And sometimes you have to notify the court of your compliance uh, when you are directed to do something. And court orders in general can not only tell you to do something, but they can also prohibit you from doing something and that's compliance on court orders. So let's see, TikTok, we're good to go. We got all the questions answered. Anybody has any questions on YouTube, feel free to ask them. We're good to go there. That's all I have, unless you have any questions um, that you get in in the next few moments, I'll be happy to address them. That's where we are, that's where we stand. We're all, you know, we're all in this together, like I said before, and we're all going to make it out. We're just going to take it one day at a time here at the law office, and I'm sure everything will be fine. Um, one of the benefits of this is I get to work all kinds of crazy hours. I can sleep late if I want to and work late into the night, which has been great. Last night I was working until about 2 a.m. I've been doing a lot of conferences and a lot of collaborating with other lawyers through Zoom and it's and Google Hangouts, and it's just been awesome. You don't have, what I've noticed is you don't have the day-to-day -day interaction with the people in person, which was kind of strange. All right, let's see. I, I am a licensed pilot, but I want to be a lawyer. Should I get the degree? for it? Should you go to law school? Mm. I mean, that's a personal evaluation you have to make and a personal decision. What I will tell you is law school is crazy expensive. And if you don't have, I mean, if you don't, I mean, I, the way, the way I looked at it is if I had it to reevaluate, I wouldn't have gone to law school when I did, I would have gone much earlier when it was a lot cheaper because it, the law school, especially now, you know, I went to law school a while ago, but still I should have gone earlier in life because it was a lot cheaper then. But now it's even more crazy. You just got to realize that you're taking on a significant amount of debt. You're going to run upwards of a hundred thousand dollars in loans. If you don't have, you know, if you're not independently wealthy and can throw the money down for that tuition. Um, Otherwise, I'd say, yeah, if you want to go to law school, go to law school. It's been beneficial for me. Um, you know, you basically, in, in my personal opinion, when you get a professional degree, a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever, you basically uncap your income potential. So, I mean, you know, if I want to make more money, I work more. And it's simple as that. And you can, you know, work yourself to death and make all that money you want, or you can work less or... If you go with a government job, you can work yourself to death and really make less. But it, I like it. I, I think it was a good idea. Um, it's always it's always beneficial it, it, to me anyway. And it's helped me develop a thought process that I've been transferred, that I've been able to transfer to other aspects of my life. So yeah, Toronto man, it is casual Wednesday. On this lockdown, 
pretty much every day is casual, except if we have if we have a teleconference with a lawyer, if we have a, or a, another lawyer or a judge, if we have you know a Zoom conference with a judge and we're talking about cases, I'll go and put the shirt on and the tie and everything, and uh, you know it'll be just like it is. But otherwise, man, it's t-shirt, shorts, and flip flops until further order by the government. Um, a lot of questions. Let me touch on some questions that I've got in recently. I got a, I get a lot of questions, and I think lawyers just in general get a lot of questions from people about all aspects of the law. I get a lot of questions about you know can the mayor can the mayor order businesses to close, uh, certain shops to close? Can the government do this and the government do that? That's not really my area of law. I practice three areas of law that I know about. That's family law, criminal defense, and personal injury, auto accidents. Those are my three areas of law. Evictions, landlord tenant, intellectual property, all that other stuff. I really don't know anything about because I don't have any experience in it. But I used to work for the government. I used to be a police officer here in Miami Dade County. And see that? That is my policeman award. So I've worked for government. And this is what I learned working for government. The government will do whatever the government wants to do until the people or the courts tell them they can't do it. And then after that, they'll do it again anyway and have to be told again that they can't do it. But that's my, you know, that's my opinion of how the government operates because, you know, the government does something and then somebody has to file for an injunction or file a lawsuit to prevent that act. And it takes a while to go through the courts. But in the meantime, they're still doing whatever it is they're doing. So I think we've reached a point in society where government just does whatever they want to do. And if they get sued, they get sued. It doesn't cost them anything to be sued because they own everything and they kind of run everything. So that's just my per personal philosophy on how government does and how government overreaches. Um, that's all. The, I'm getting a lot of questions also about modifying time sharing and modifying child support and alimony down here in south florida we have a lot of people and you know we rely on tourists so we have a significant portion of the population in the service industries you know that work in hospitalities bars restaurants hotels and all that i have a lot of clients that work in those industries um and they're all basically out of work and I'm getting a lot of questions from them about modifying alimony and child support, which this is in Florida to modify alimony and child support, you have to have a substantial change in circumstance. And if you lose your job and it's not voluntarily, voluntary, voluntary, that is a substantial change in circumstance, which you can use to plead for a modification of alimony and child support. And we can certainly file those as we are filing new cases in divorce and domestic violence right now. The problem is you can file the petition to modify, but the courts are closed. So we can't get hearings on them until all this is done. But you can file it. You can get it in place. And the date of filing is a cutoff date for the modification. So if you're in that circumstance, you should go ahead and file for the modification. And then when the courts reopen, you can set your hearing because the date of the modification will be the date that the court goes back to. If you're successful, the court goes back to and actually modifies the child support or alimony. The problem with people is, is they put it off. Let's, let's say you put it off. You know, let's say we're still under this in six months from now. You put it off until then. Well, your retroactive modification goes back to the date of filing, not when you should have filed. So that's the benefit of if you have a problem now, get in front of it, address it, don't let it linger and get it filed. So you at least have that filing date in place. All right. I got a couple more questions that came in. Casual Wednesday. Yeah, all right, I did. All right, you got a question. All right, so now I'm answering questions before you're even asking them, so that's pretty good. All right, Thomas, how you doing, man? Can you tell us what creates martial law? Martial law is where they, you don't you don't want to see martial law. I mean, that's, again, that's not my area of law, but you don't want to see martial law implemented because that's where the government basically suspends everything. They suspend habeas corpus. They suspend all kinds of rights, and they, they really go into 
more of a totalitarian move. We do not want to see martial law. Um, you know, nobody wants to see martial law in this country. And I don't think we're I don't think we're going to go there. I think, you know, the economy is going to take a hit, but I think it'll come back. All right. Toronto, Toronto man. That's an interesting opinion. A government process and procedure. My personal opinion, if that's what it is, you know, not my area of law again, but that is my personal opinion on government. Um, we have another question come in. How does the court decide the amount of alimony to be paid? Do they take into consideration the party circumstances? To a degree. Alimony, let me, do, let me give you an idea how child support is done first, and then I'll go into alimony. Because if the case involves kids, you have to do child support first. Child support takes the net income, which is the gross income with allowable deductions, you know, recognized deductions, not any deductions you want or not voluntary deductions, but allowable deductions, the net income of the parties. And then it combines that. It adds it together. Then you go to a table in our statute, in the Florida statute, chapter 61, you go down the table, you have one kid, you go down the table to how much you make how much the combined income is for the two parties. You go over to one child and that tells you the child support amount. Then you take that child support amount and multiply it by the percentage that each party contributes to that net income. And then that outcome, you know, you put in your health insurance and your child care costs and all that in a formula. And that gives you your child support. Alimony is not like that. Alimony is completely negotiable. It's based on one person, it's a two-part test. One person's need and the other person's ability to pay. So for example, it's say the wife needs alimony. The wife claims she needs alimony. She has to demonstrate a need, that she has a need for a certain amount of alimony and that the other person has the ability to pay that amount. Now you can have, you have cases where one party comes up and they can demonstrate a need but the, they can't demonstrate that the other party has the ability to pay. So that's how a court looks at alimony. Alimony, unlike child support, is completely negotiable. And most people in 98% of the cases that involve alimony negotiate the alimony between themselves, what they can live with you know, during mediation or otherwise and the court doesn't get to decide. Um, I can give you an example on a case I handled a few years ago that actually went to trial where one $500 a month in alimony and alimony was the only issue outstanding in the case. All the other issues had been resolved. We asked for 2000 a month in alimony. Um, we couldn't reach an agreement. He refused to budge off his 500. We didn't think it was reasonable to come down from the 2000, given the expenses and the history and the, the length of the marriage. And we went to trial on the alimony issue and the judge ended up jacking that party for $4,000 a month, twice what we were asking for. So you got to be careful when you're dealing with alimony. And remember, as in all family law cases, it's always better to resolve a case in a mediation or prior to trial on terms you can live with and you can be happy with than it is to go in, present your case to a judge who's only going to have a cursory knowledge of your case and he's going to end up making decisions that affect the rest of your life. So I hope that answers your question as far as alimony goes. It's, you know, most cases, at least a lot of the cases I see have kids involved. So we're always calculating child support and then alimony because that affects the incomes of the parties. Um, let's go back and see if we had any on TikTok. Martial law, got that one, got the government. Okay, that looks like it as far as questions. Once again, I will post the law school class that we did yesterday on Zoom, which deals with how to prepare for depositions and hearings and guardian at litem <laughs> interviews that I did with um, a law professor and another attorney, another family law attorney uh, at the University of Miami Law School. It was cool. We all did it remote. The three of us were remote. The kids were in the audience, I guess. 
I don't know, the three of us were remote and we could see each other on the screen and we took turns talking. It was pretty cool. So it can work. The technology is working very well for us. And it's a lot of fun. But that video, if you have something coming up, if you have a deposition or a hearing coming up or a guardian at litem in your case, and um, you have the interview coming up with the guardian at litem, that gives you a few tips. It's about an hour long video that gives you a few tips on how to prepare if you're unrepresented in a case, which most people in family law cases are um, unrepresented without attorneys, because you know we understand that most people can't afford attorneys to hash out divorce cases. It's very, it's very, very expensive. And I'll be honest with you, it's it's one of the biggest expenses you'll probably ever have in your life, except for purchasing your house. But you know, like I said, about ninety something, ninety seven, ninety five percent of family law cases involve unrepresented parties and they get messed up in the case and the case drags on. It's, it's a really terrible circumstance and they have to, you know, they must find a better way to resolve domestic issues than the current system they have, because you can get very easily lost in the system and your case can linger forever and ever. And, you know, it's, I mean, personally, I don't think the courts are the right place for family law cases, for divorce cases. They need to come up with a better idea because, you know, courts are courts were designed for conflicts between individuals, you know, dealing with contracts, you know, dealing with torts, stuff like that. Courts are naturally an adversarial place to be. And not all your family law cases involve two people that are adversarial or start off adversarial, but the court process can make one or both of those people adversarial. And it's really, it's really a shame. And that, you know, that leads to a, a lot of stress and a lot of the expense for the people. So I just think my personal opinion, they need to find a better way to deal with divorces outside of a court system. All right. That looks like it. I hope I answered all your questions. Feel free to, if you have any other questions or anything comes up or any suggestions as far as the lives of the podcast or um, anything else, feel free to contact me on any of the other platforms. You can DM me on any of the platforms. I check them throughout the day and usually pretty good at staying up on them. You can also email me at patrick at pjmlawyer.com. If you need resources related to criminal law or um, domestic violence or family law, I have a lot of those resources on my website at pjmlawyer.com. And what else? If you need me, call me or email me. I'm always happy to talk to you. Uh, everybody stay safe. Be kind to your fellow human being. If you could do something out of kindness for somebody, please take advantage of that. I promise it'll pay you back over and over and over in the good karma. Uh, stay safe out there. Remember, we all have to get through this. We all will get through this and we all will be fine. I will see you next week for sure. Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. I try to get in here at 6 p.m. Sometimes I run a little late, but I try to get in here at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, I will also probably be doing an update on YouTube and another platform. Uh, last Monday, just past Monday, I did it on my Facebook group, which is Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer. If you want to join that Facebook group, hit the join button. I'll approve you. Monday, I'll be doing a court update to let you know what's going on in the courts, because like I said, we're expecting a new order to come out for Miami-Dade County, um, Broward County and Palm Beach County. The order is still effective through, but I think Miami-Dade County, their order ends Friday. So we will address what they're doing with the courts in South Florida. Beyond South Florida, I'm not sure about because Dave Broward, Palm Beach are my primary jurisdictions I practice in. I don't have currently have any other cases in any other jurisdictions in family law or criminal law, but I do have some in other jurisdictions on personal injury, which are fast moving cases anyway so they're really not impacting the court closures and other jurisdictions are really not impacting our office be safe be happy we'll get through this see you wednesday if you join my group i'll see you monday also if you look on my twitter feed on the very first tweet is pinned 
something that will save you money on your family law case. If you want to download that, feel free, fill in your email, it'll send it to you. You'll save money. My clients have saved money. All of them have reported saving money. Any questions? Let me know. It's my pleasure. I'm very humbled that people will stop in to talk to me and ask me questions. And you know, the amount of the amount of DMs and emails I receive as a result of you know my social media activity and my lives is just very very great and you know i'm just i'm just humbled by it all that that uh you guys think that highly of me and i think that highly of you i love every one of you have a great night bye bye